You know? Yeah. Bra. Live and local. We have a potpourri of stuff for you. It's a potpourri. And we'll get into that right after traffic. Kelly Quinn, come on in. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Facebook Live. We got live and local coming up. This is the Ethan and Lou Show on I-95 WRKI. And, uh, of course, you can listen to us anywhere in the world on the I-95 Rock app. You know what I'm saying, bro? Bra? Bra? Was that your thing? The thing you wanted to do? No. Okay. So I got more. All right, you blast me in the face I'll with that. I'll blast you in the face with that. And then we'll do some quick audio. All right. So, of course, the big, big news is uh, POTUS has uh, the COVID juices. So, you know, the funny side of me wants to tell jokes, but I also kind of like want to lay a warning out for everybody because everybody hates everybody. Yeah. You know? That's true. And I have a prediction about how this is going to play out for us. Another prediction. Prediction, man. Many people in the New Milford community have been wondering, is trunk or treat going to happen this year? Oh. It's, a, it's a wildly popular uh, Halloween activity. I've heard about that, yeah. Yeah, well, it has survived the pandemic. All right. All right, but with a different format. Trunk or treat used to happen right on Main Street, where you decorate the cars. People would bring their cars down decorated. They'd be in costume. And the kids would go car to car and uh, get their candy from the candy that's in each vehicle's trunk. Oh, cool. They can't do that this year. So how are they doing? So it's going to be trunk or treat. It's going to be at the John Pettibone, Commun uh, Pettibone Community Center. Right. Where you go, you drive up. Now, if you're 10 or 11, you can't drive up. Your parents will drive up, and then people who are partaking in this will take candy from their trunk and throw it at your face. <laughs> They're not going to throw it at you. They're going to put it in your trunk. Okay, I still, I already don't understand what it is. What you, I just told you. Yeah, I know, but I don't get it. Because I don't understand the original concept. The original concept is, uh, you, it's... No, a, you said it already. It's not a trick-or-treating, you know. You, you go mean, in the trunk. Right, right. They have a trunk. What it is, it's, a, it's an activity, so that it's a, it's a, uh, how do I put this? It's like dressing up in costume, both your car and yourself. Right. In the middle of Main Street in New Milford, but this time it moves to John Pettibone, and they're doing social distancing and that whole thing. Beauty, beauty. Okay, so it's so still that's on. happening, people. It's still on. It's October 31st on Halloween. Uh, go to New Milford website to find out how you can take part. Because you have to register for this if you want to take part. Yeah, if you're a mom, get your costume from Yandy, you know? One of them hot costumes. That's probably not appropriate yeah. since it's a family event. <laughs> who are you? I'm Dr. Milfenstein. <laughs> that's why. <life. laughs> All right, we had Danbury Mayor Mark Batman on the show yesterday. Yes, and we had did. him break down the presidential debate. Uh, but then it had a local twist to it. We asked him about voter fraud, and he had a message for folks in Western Connecticut. Understand that we have a number of checkpoints in the registrar's office and the town clerk's office to make sure that if you're asking for a ballot, you're a registered voter in the city of Danbury, and that uh, if you mail your ballot in, we know that you already did that. And if you try to show up at your local polling place on election day and vote again, we're going to catch you. And if you we feel that this is a pattern of conduct by a person or groups of people, we will forward you to the state's attorney's office for prosecution. It's a felony of five years in prison and, and, and uh, a federal crime as well. So um, you can feel very confident that here in Danbury, our system is designed to, to dispel that kind of cheating or manipulation of balance. It doesn't happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen in other cities in Connecticut. I know one city in particular where it's just outrageous what goes on with absentee uh, ballots and applications. But here in Danbury, uh, we've got it down. And, and that's true for the entire greater Danbury area. All of our town clerks and registrars do a great job. So that was interesting. So first of all, he, he has great confidence in what goes on here in western Connecticut, you know, and the greater Danbury area. But he mentioned one town, and obviously he didn't say which town it yeah, was. Yeah. I wanted you to guess, because I have an idea of what town, what town, and it's a city, mm -hmm. that I think he believes there's voter fraud. Yeah. 
You want to guess? You got Bridgeport. Bridgeport, <laughs> correct. <laughs> the because city that Danim is the mayor. The city that dares Danim spent seven years in prison. The city that dares to commit constant right. crime at every level. Now the only the only <laughs> way that could have been better when he was talking about it, and it, this is not true though, is that if you're caught trying to double vote, okay, yeah. you would get immediately thrown in the claim. Well, I mean, right away, immediate. That that's a good warning to throw out there. You know, if you try this, they'll tur turn you over to the state's attorney's office. That's correct. Uh, as you should be, right? Uh, the other thing that I found interesting is that he did admit at some point during our interview about the presidential debate that he thinks that Trump is undermining the election process. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good nuggets in there. If you want interesting political talk, this is the segment. You go to i95rock.com. I got the, uh, the blog with all the quotes in it, and then I have uh, two YouTube videos, the full interview with Mark yesterday, and then just a portion where he talks about having confidence in our local system. I'm going to have to ask you to back down on doing stuff. I know, <laughs> the stuff that you're, I'm you're doing. You're overachiever all of a sudden. And now... You make me look like I work part-time here. No, no, I make everybody look that way. <laughs> it's not just you. Yeah. Uh, now, so, you know, uh, President Trump and Melania have the COVID. Right. It was announced via tweet, 1 o'clock in the morning. Now, this is like a Christmas for liberals. I don't want to take a dump on your birthday cake, but let's try something here. Let's try and not say na 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 in the faces of the people you disagree with. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, it's, like, it's not even fair to turn around and say, it is what it is. Or, this will go away like things go away, right? It's an easy thing to do. People are going to do it all day. But they should. And not just because, you know, it's the high road, which everybody abandoned a long time ago. But because what I see, you know, I'm a downfield vision fella. I already know that November in this country is going to be an S show like we have never seen before because of the election process. I am predicting violence like we've never seen across this country. And if you want to start it early, then just start poking each other with a stick over this COVID thing. Your thoughts? My thoughts are is that I'm, I'm not going to be involved. Uh, I am a Democrat. Right. But I'm not going to toss this up. All I'm going to say is that I'm not surprised. I mean, the man doesn't wear a mask a lot. And right. I, and I just think it was just uh, bound to happen. And I'm sorry that it happened. Right. But when you don't wear a mask and you know you should, this is what can happen. The man is 74 years old. So that's a, a, high a scary role. thing for the, for the office thing. of the president. Right. Right. So I'm just saying everybody attempt to take the high road on this No one. one's going to take the high no, road. No, no, no. One, they can't take the high road. Uh, a blog I did, it was a poll question. Are you going to go to, uh, and start doing indoor dining on October 8th <laughs> when restaurants... <laughs> Go to 75 percent capacity. It's kind of like a milk toast question yeah. as it pertains to the pandemic. Okay. I got over 100 comments. Sure, all angry. most of them. No, not that we're all angry. Uh, most of them were yes or no, and why I'm going to, why I'm not going to. But there were a couple, a couple of uh, doinks in there who decided they were going to make it political, political, or throw in, uh, you know, the uh, fu thing, and you know, uh, go out and have some fun. And if you don't want to, then then you know. F you. Sure. But you just, you know, I, yes or no? That's all I was asking. <laughs> I wasn't asking for any political. Yeah, F you was not in the column. There was no column for F you. I, I hear you. So, so you, I mean, if you're doing that, then it, this is going to get this is going to get nasty. Yeah, I think like like it's a scary time to be alive, and I just look around and I see the potential for violence everywhere. And is that there is we, potential for violence? I I wouldn't guarantee there's going to be. I think it's going to get. What's the word I want to use? Uh, it's going to get murky. Yeah, well, we all have kids and grandkids. Don't you want them to be safe and live in a safe world? Yes. And it's time to just go, all right, if you, if you disagree with somebody, uh, you could do it in a normal way. You don't have to do it loudly. And if it gets too much for you and you just don't want to hear the other person anymore, it's not like you're going to change their mind. Then no, just, no. just go, I don't need to talk to this person. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. Oh, I've done that with a lot of people. You know, I sit here all the time talking about jacking people in the neck with a right. sock full of ball bearings. Uh -huh. It's all funny. I think that's funny. Right. On paper. In reality, it could be very dangerous. And I, I want to ask you this question. How many Americans have actually been punched in the face? I've been punched in the face. Right. Okay? Thrown a few punches myself, mm -hmm. but I've been punched in the face. Do you know how much that hurts? I can't imagine. Do you I have want, any I idea? Because that. that there's hurt. a lot of people walking around out there, running their mouths, that have obviously have never been punched in the face. 
So act like you might get punched in the face today. Good advice. <laughs> Thank you. Good advice. I, I, I never want to experience that. It's just, just <laughs> it hurts. Something I've ever... <laughs> it really hurts. <laughs> All right. Are we all set with live <laughs> Yeah, we are. All right. 632, Ethan and Lou. We've got clearing eventually today up to 61. I'm Dr. Chang's dental What's up, players, players? Patient. Now, why can't I see their comments? I can see them, but they're all, like, ghosted out. Uh, all right. Who's mine? Okay. Steve, Sammy, Bill, Adam, Paul, Leanne. Good morning, Jay Coffee. How you doing, bro? Bra. Bra. That's right. Das effects to your face, Jay. Jay Coffee, I'm loving your perspective lately. I think you and I are becoming closer and closer as the years grow on. You know. <laughs> Jay and I had a blast playing golf, and Jay's one of these guys. Bath, Jane, Irene, Laura, Gary, Marshall. Most people, you know, I do the same thing every time I go golfing. I play the first four holes. Yeah. And then I pick and choose what I'm going to do, and I just drink and hang out, talk shit, sit in the car. It's a nice day out for me. Right, you're kind of like the stand-up comic in the group. Yeah, so... Entertaining. I don't think I was this funny when we went uh, this time. But the fact of the matter is, what I don't want from the other fellows in the foursome is to judge the fact that I've basically given up on the day. Why don't you want them to judge? I mean, it's a part of life. No, I know. I just want to chill. I don't want to hear anybody go, you're not going to play? You know, you've destroyed the integrity of the game. Right. I don't really care about that. I, I just want to hang out. <laughs> no kidding. So Jay didn't care at all. Yeah. We were just chilling. Uh -huh. Jay was still playing. Right. We were talking yang, okay. as they say on the streets. And that was it. Is that what they say on the streets? Yeah, they talk yang. yang. What's up, Busters? Part of our Bringing It Back Word series, Buster. <laughs> I hit a ball. Oh, I hit one ball, yeah. Life lessons with Lou. Walk around like you're going to get punched in the face. That's right, Brian. What about chickens? I'll tell you, these chickens are really liberal. <laughs> you know, especially those free-range chickens. Because <laughs> they get bring, to go... Next time you play golf, you should bring <laughs> half a dozen chickens. I still have your clubs in my car. I know you do. What are we going to do about that? Uh, uh, you can give them to me. I'll take them back to the house. You know, those chickens that they put in the pens? Yeah. Those are Republicans. And the free-range chickens are Democrats, you see. All They've right. been to Euro Disney, you know? <laughs> I want to know how they find them free-range chickens. These people are always bragging about free-range chickens, right? Yeah, right. That means that they just let them wander. Right. So when it comes time to kill your chicken... You gotta chase it. <laughs> yeah. You're running around chasing. It's very difficult. What are you chasing with? Like an axe? <laughs> I don't... I don't know what you do, and I never killed a chicken myself. Yeah. I actually saw this on Ratchet, the Netflix... Yes, uh, I, uh, I watched an episode. TV series sure. about uh, Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. One flew over the cuckoo's nest fame. And uh, one of the characters in it catches a chicken and shows the other character how to break the chicken's neck. Mm -hmm. Chickens. When chicken news breaks, the iNews team is there. Do we have an iNews team? <laughs> We're it, bro. Oh. I actually used to golf in high school, and the boy, with the boys, it is rough. I threw my driver into the tree once. Have you ever heard my story? About being a caddy? I've heard it several times. Yeah, so many times. <laughs> I, haven't, I don't know if I have any energy. It's just, uh, I was a caddy and people were miserable to me and that's why I hated yeah. golf for so long. But it's the only excuse you have to get out of the house for five hours with right. the dudes. You know, hours. with the bros. Okay, so I want you to go check out an article I wrote about this Brazilian doctor, you understand? Now she got a fat ass, as they say on the streets. And she <laughs> competed in the 2019 Miss Bum Bum contest, which, Ethan, we all understand is the Super Bowl of rear-end competitions. Correct. I mean, you are not getting in there without an ungodly rump, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, they are screening them like they crazy. Do they have to have a Kim Kardashian rump to get in there? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So this lady, uh, let me check her name, let me check it. She didn't win the Bum Bum contest. Her name is uh, Susie Cortez. Oh, no, Rayanne Laura Souza. And she lost to Susie Cortez in the Bum Bum competition. But Rayanne happens to be a medical doctor in Brazil. And now she can't get work because she sh showed her rear end off. What do you think about that? I think that that's her problem. No. I'm mortified and stupefied. We are in the middle of a global pandemic. Who has the balls to sideline 
a qualified doctor just because they took their pants off. Evidently, uh, the committee who rules this particular uh, contest. Lives are at stake here, okay? Their lives are not at stake. Lives are at stake. Oh, no, We're in the middle of a pandemic. There are plenty of doctors. She decided to do it. She's gone. Done. I don't like it. You know, as a person who's a free thinker and you're very accepting of people, why can't you accept the fact that rear ends need to be showed and want to be viewed? Uh, I, I'm all for that. Here's another but thing. there's got to be some sort of decorum here. No decorum. Decorum's out. The other day, Kylie Jenner drops a thirst trap, right, on vote.org. You know what a thirst trap is? No. Okay, this is when you get completely or half butt naked, you know, and you post it on social media. It's called the thirst trap, right? Well, she did it on vote.org. Mm -hmm. Do you know that voter registration went up 1,500% that I'm day? I'm all for it then. Record voter registration all for it. that day. We got to go on here. So I'm not the only one. That's right, Christine. I am a free-range thinker. I I've been a Euro rock, Disney. Rock and roll and I ninety five rock dot com. Let me just say this. Ha! If you want to find out what's happening behind the radio show before we crack the mics and go on the air, right? You need to go to our I ninety five Facebook page because it's a different ball game. It's an absolutely different ball game. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's a good time. It is a good time. I kind of black out and just say things for 35 minutes. That's correct. And then I spend the rest of the day apologizing for those things. Mm -hmm. But it's really fun. It, it is a lot of fun. You get to see and hear the stuff you don't hear, what we're doing right now. We've been talking about butt cheeks, chickens, and Euro Disney, That's so right. catch up. How can, how, can you, <laughs> how can you not join us? <laughs> Cloudy with showers, gradual clearing this afternoon up to 61. Here's Kelly Clinton with the cars. Oh, you guys, I'm sorry I didn't show you. Ray Ann. So this is not her bum bum. But that's her. She's, she's an attractive lady. You know what I'm saying? And that's nice. It's okay. Nice. It's okay to celebrate attractiveness, I think. I think that's still okay. So here's the thing. I have toxic masculinity. Did you know about this? No. I've been diagnosed with toxic masculinity. Who diagnosed that? My wife. So, <laughs> she's in this lady female empowerment talk to each other everyday group. Yeah. Which I support bigly. Because it makes her happy, you know? And it makes her feel positive and happy about herself. And that is a fantastic thing. Last night, they are going to have a moon ritual because of the harvest moon. Okay. They, they put a cup of water outside, capture the moon spirit in the water, and then they bring it in and suck the essence into their what face. Are these women indigenous? <laughs> so they're having their, their Zoom chat for this. And I said, well, you know, I'm kind of getting jealous. I think I want to be part of a female empowerment group, you know? Yeah. And she said, you're not invited. But she said one of the husbands of the group was invited. And I said, well, why is he invited? And she said, because he's nice. And I said, oh, just because I'm an asshole, Here we go. I can't be part of the moon? All right, Jay, thank you. 641, let's uh, check sports. Yeah, the Jets are 0-4 after a 37-28 loss to the Broncos on Thursday Night Football. Called it. Uh, the pressure will be surely mounting on Jets head coach Adam Gase with the team 0-4 for the second straight season. A lot of people calling for his job, and they think he'll be fired over this loss. Giants will head west this weekend to battle the Rams at the new SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. Patriots face perhaps their stiffest test of the season Sunday against the Super Bowl champion Chiefs in Kansas City. That's your check on sports for now. Check on weather for the weekend. Looks pretty good. <coughs> Cloudy showers to start today. Gradual clearing this afternoon. Up to 61. Tomorrow, sunny 64. Sunday, sunny at 66. So if you're just joining us, the, uh, the female empowerment group, Moon Ritual, they're on Zoom. Right. I'm not invited. One of the other husbands is. Because he's nice, and apparently I'm an asshole. Uh -huh. I said, cool, 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 cool. That's fair. <laughs> is that what you said? Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and... Uh, I was told that I have toxic masculinity and that I'll probably disturb the general spirit of the group. 
And I, I gotta be honest with you, I wasn't all that offended. <laughs> well, because it's true. <laughs> well, I mean, they are emoting heavily. I mean, they're really laying it on the line. There's a lot of trust that they've developed in this group. Mm -hmm. And I could easily ruin that with three, four jokes. Oh, yeah. If I start launching out jokes, you know, it will make people uncomfortable that have established trust. Correct. So I understand, but I want to know who this cl ass clown is who got invited. He must be a blast. Okay. Let me tell you what right now. Are you now. ready for this one? He must be a lot of fun. Wait, wait. What, what, let me get a title from you as to what it is, because this, there's a part two to this story you won't believe. What do you mean, a title for what? For what you want to say so you don't forget it. Uh, toxic Masculinity Part Two. Okay. So, now I'm not invited. And my role at this point is to watch Vita and Lucas so Erica could be uninterrupted because the trust and the moon ritual and all that stuff, it's, it's not going to be relaxing or Where does fun. this take place? In, in the house. She's got like her own oh, section, okay. but we have an open layout, you know, so she can hear right. everything. Okay. So I have to try and keep the kids away from the zone so she can really enjoy it and relax. Within five minutes, Vita had her tap shoes on and was throwing steak around the living room. <laughs> Come on, really? I kid you not. You're not exaggerating? I kid you not. Throwing and, steak? And Erica just turns and, and, and like I could hear her from the other room. She yeah. goes, really? With the tap shoes? So I'm off to a flying start. <laughs> So, I, I got things under control-ish, so she can enjoy a good chunk of this moon ritual thing. And then, yep. <laughs> it all happened at once. Vita had to use the restroom, right? And she's been having some issues with the pee-pee. As advanced as she is, this is one of the challenges that we have with her. So she was going on her own to use the bathroom. But Lucas was in there, with the door locked, going to the bathroom himself. That's a problem. We have another bathroom downstairs. That's my father-in-law's. It's a ways away. She looks like she's in dire need of using the, the toilet now. Mm -hmm. So quick dad thinking, right? I remember that we had her portable potty drying on the front porch. So dark of night, I carry it, whisk her outside, yeah. and stick her on the front porch potty. There you go. Right? For all to see. I mean, there was nobody in the neighborhood, but sure, sure. now she's using the, the, or I think she's using the bathroom, and she's telling me to go away, that she wants her privacy. Mm -hmm. And now, what way, it's a catch-22. Right. So I go inside, but I'm keeping an eye on her, because she's alone in the dark with her pants off. Sure. You know? So now I'm inside watching. She's still yelling at me about privacy, right? Luke is still in the bathroom. And then a stray cat comes out of nowhere. Stray cat. Yeah, starts sniffing around my half-naked daughter in the dark of night. So I run outside, scare the cat away, you know, pick up Vita. I turn around, Lucas comes out of the bathroom and goes, she can use the bathroom now. And she peed herself. Huh? Mission accomplished, Dad. Way to go. Moon ritual ruined. I'm an idiot. How about that? Can't we do the moon ritual uh, hold where there are no kids, like maybe in someone else's home? I don't know. Toxic masculinity part two. You're up, E. Let's hear um, Ethan's. Mindy hangs out occasionally with eight or nine other women, okay? Yeah. Uh, these She calls them her Wyoming girls because these are the, this is the group that goes to Wyoming. They all live in the general vicinity, the general area, okay? Right. And they go once a year. They have a, a birthday party on the boat, uh, they go down to New York maybe once or twice, three times a year, you know, to a show, to Carmine's for dinner. <clears throat> I got asked to go to one of the shows and to go out to dinner with this group. You're the guy. I'm the guy. And you know why? Because I'm a listener. Right. Women love men who listen and don't try to butt in and whatnot. Right. Um, and I love all these women. I mean, not in that, you know, that sense. Sure. But they love me. Right. Because of the non-toxic masculinity. Right. But I want to know what is toxic about making jokes. Well, if it infringes on what they're trying to accomplish. Right. That I understand. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I, if they're offensive and whatnot, and if, if maybe you know that it's going, going to be offensive and you have to make them anyway, that's toxic masculinity. Here's another thing that I heard, and I... How about you just go along with the conversation? You try to be nice? Tough to do. Somebody's going to say no, something really hippity-dippity, and i got to make a joke. Yeah, see, that's the problem. And, and psychologists will tell you that, that jokes and people who are, are humorous all the time, or tr attempt to be humorous all the time, or right. whatever, or constantly making jokes, that it's actually an act of aggression. And I, I don't know. I think that's worse shit. You can't just be funny all the time? No, I think it's you looking for attention. That's part. That's probably part of it. Yeah. We can't dismiss that. We can't dismiss. I'm not dismissing. Are you looking at it? We're looking. We're looking at. We've got some of our best people, looking at the toxic masculinity. <laughs> so I just thought that was a fun story. It's a typical dad thing. I had all the best intentions, and what we ended up with well, you was tried. a baby soaked in urine, steak all over the house. Right there you go. Tap dancing fool in Vita, pee pee in the pants. <laughs> Duties everywhere, stray cats. It's just a nightmare. Wow. It was a smorgasbord of activity. It was a smorgasbord. And you don't get a smorgasbord every single day. But I got to tell you, with the exception of a few issues that I have, which are pretty big. Yeah. And you know what they are. Sure. I'm well aware of what they are. You know that, right? You would agree with oh, that? Oh, do I know that? Yeah. I'm very self-aware. Uh, I think I'm pretty kick-ass and awesome. <laughs> Even though I'm told every day you're not kick ass well, and awesome. Well, here's the deal. The deal is, and I can't tell you how to live your life. Sure. You have to discover that yourself. And you even made, you came to this revelation that, that you make little things into big things. Right. And you do it all the time. You make your own problems. Right. And that's you, but that's the way you think. Now... We have a good time because after three, or half, three and a half, four hours, we're done. We're right done. You go, I go my way, I go in to debrief after the show. Right. And then you do your, you know, overachieving thing here at the station, and then you go home, you work out, you overachieve some more. Right. Then you come back here to work some more. Right. But, well, that's, but that's the nature of your personality. You have to make a decision if that is what you want or whether you want to... Here's what I'm thinking. My advice would be... If, if you could tone it down a little bit. <laughs> the, Your wife wouldn't be yelling at you all the time. Here's the real thing about where this all came from, right? The making a big deal out of little things. Right. Prior to working here, and I'm talking prior, not just the morning show, but the years before that. So I've been here, what, 21 years, something like that? Uh -huh. I was not like this. But I developed, I, I noticed something. Because you had to work with a sales staff. Yeah, <laughs> that you that when you are in this this kind of business, big things don't always occur. So you have to find little things and turn them into big things. No, you don't. For the show, I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that tactic works, and I've honed it over the years. But when I go home, I have a tough time turning her off, shutting her down. <laughs> That, that is absolutely 100% correct. Yeah. I try to explain to my wife that the transition between what we do here and going home and not doing what we do here is difficult. It's two different lives. Right. It's this personality, which we use on the air, and then being home... And trying to, well, I can do it, because that, that's the nature of my personality. Are, it's like two different, it's a work life and it's a home life. Mm -hmm. And some days it's really tough to distinguish between the two. Yeah. It takes a few hours to shut it off. Right. And in those few hours, I can ruin everyone's day. Right. <laughs> See, I just, well, I go home and I just don't really say that's a whole what, lot. what it boils down to. Yeah. This is why I like to be alone. I know. But aside from the many problems that we listed, we also, you know, said some kick-ass things about it. <laughs> Are we all clear on what's going on here? It's a lot. Do, do you think they care at all, though? I, I don't know. Is I don't it, care if they Maybe they just care. want to hear some jokes. I don't care if they care. <laughs> okay. 30 seconds. No audio. No yadio. All right. Ready for the jokes, bitches? <laughs>
Oh, can I get a, a gander at them real quick? A gander? Does that even make sense there? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes! Yes. I gotta ask them a poll question for the second one. Eight seconds. All right. So I 95, the home of rock and roll, I 95, rock that Hey, if you came upon 10 grand, right, what would you do with it? Right now? Uh, you know what? Right now it's a boring answer, but it would, it would give me so much relief to mm -hmm. pay off some of these back bills. Right. You know, I think a lot of people are in that same situation, and uh, we're offering you a chance to get out of that financial trouble and win up to $10,000 on I-95 with the ultimate stimulus check. You can win $1,000. Maybe you can win two. Right. But you can win up to 10000 Somebody could uh, hit the big one. Be a big, 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 big winner. You've got to have the I-95 Rock app to play this. So easy. You download it for free at Google Play or the App Store. Then you have the app. You get the code word. You punch it in when we tell you, and you're off and running there, guy. Every hour, you can get in every single hour. The more you enter, the more you have a chance to win. Excellent. The step lab's coming up. Let's get the I-95 right now. Traffic update. Kelly Coyne, good morning. Yandy. Yandy is the goods. You become too critical when you're self-aware. Ah! You gotta, you, I don't know. I don't have the answers. You gotta, you don't gotta, what does it matter? Uh, I just know that I've been diagnosed with toxic masculinity. What do you take for that, Tylenol? Say it right up front. This yeah. uh, version of missed headlines uh, is <clears throat> are not for the children. All right. <laughs> okay. If you have children in the car and you're listening, this is not for the children. I'm Lou Milano, and I approve this message. <laughs> Police are investigating after a possibly decaying foot was found on a popular beach in Bali. Sure. The Sun reports uh, the blackened object was discovered by tourists on Barawa Beach. Uh -huh. Now authorities say they have little information on the body part, and there are no missing person reports in the area. Information like that at this point is still kind of shocking, but I feel the way the world is going. In a couple of years, something like that, like a decaying severed foot on the beach, will be old hat. You know, you'd be at the beach with your buddy, you'd be like, hey, Glenn, what do you got there? He'd be like, oh, it's a foot. You'd be like, oh. Say, man, we got any sun chips? What do you got, the harvest cheddar over there? <laughs> it's going to be no big deal. I think it's like that now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not blinking. Are you blinking? No, not at all. So we got a foot on a beach. Nothing surprises us anymore. Yeah. Watch my dive. We have a lawsuit uh, alleging the two NYPD cops tased a woman in her uh, crotch rear area. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she was out celebrating her birthday. Um, J. Denny Sargent says she was out in the Lower East Side with a group of friends when some cops showed up and began questioning them. She claims to have uh, sarcastically told them to go protect the white people. Uh -huh, uh huh. Which reportedly prompted two officers to wrestle her to the ground after putting a taser to her crotch and zapping her. Sergeant was brought to a precinct and then treated for her wounds before being left in a cell overnight. Charges against the woman were eventually dropped, suit seeking unspecified damages in a jury trial. It begs the question. Everyone's thinking it. What's the question? What's the worst place to be to be tased if you're a lady? Right. You know. That's got to be it. Is it the pineapples or you know? That's got to be it. Or the old beef there. Uh, very, very, it's such a poor taste. I just did that for Jim Clark. Love you, Jimmy. <laughs> that was his favorite word. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And he would say, like, like really intensely. Yeah, I know. We love you, Jim. Beave, that one was for you. That's for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's our poll question this morning. It actually is our poll question. It is. On my Instagram page, right? I, at Lumilano79. Go check it out, vote. Very classy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 28-year-old woman. Her name is Vanessa Jones. She's from St. Petersburg, Florida. Florida, you say. Around 11 o'clock on uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m., she was outside of a 7-Eleven, and uh, uh, she was uh, pleasuring herself. Good times. Yeah. She kept doing it even after a kid under 16 <coughs> came to the 7-Eleven with her uncle. The kid's uncle took a video of Vanessa rubbing on herself and uh, turned it over to the cops. 
and I'm sure uh, he deleted it right after. Yeah, but and he has no plans to watch it ever again. Right. Right. Vanessa was arrested for a felony lewd and lascivious ex exhibition. It's uh, it's interesting that it's 7-Eleven because. Not all that long ago, I did an article, which you can read at i95rock.com, where yeah. somebody left a butt plug on top of the garbage outside the 7-Eleven on clapboard. Right. You know? I got to wonder aloud. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you, if you had to go to, like, a convenience store, grocery store, restaurant, where would you most want to pleasure yourself in public? Nowhere. No, Best Buy? Nowhere. 7-Eleven? I think it's a private matter. Wawa? Well, maybe Wawa. I'll tell you, Wegmans really tickles me where I itch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, really? I think there's a sign up on one of the walls in Wegmans, no pleasure in yourself. That's why they won't put a Wegmans here. Yeah. They heard how much I want to pleasure myself outside of it. And there you go. Those are your missed headlines this morning. Round one. All right, so two poll questions. You can be tased in the pineapples or the old bushels, McGee. Which one are you going with? That's number one. Oh, and then part two, what yeah. retail outlet you most want to diddle yourself outside of? We're just having a party here. It's a Freaky it's Feelings a Open Phone Lines Flip Phone Friday. Keep and, and everybody, every, every week, every week. <laughs> Everybody's excited. You know I love alliteration, right? Sure, yeah. And rhyming. I like to porty. Right. And let me quote Bastille when I say, Words are all we have. We'll keep talking. We'll keep talking. You like that band, Bastille? Uh, no. Wow, you let don't me, know what uh, you're me, talking about. Let me about. Uh, update you on what we're doing here. Uh, we've got about five and a half minutes till we come back on. Five so and a half minutes. Just to make sure you get all your activities finished. Five and a half minutes till we come back yes. on. Okay. Piggly Wiggly, says John. He would like to pleasure himself at the Piggly Wiggly. Lisa, uh, your, Lisa's response is far too long. Sammy says, Ar <laughs> <laughs> Sammy says Archway. Archway. Adam says, right, Nakuka. Frank's checking in. I had an ex-girlfriend that was into being zapped, says my buddy Peeps. Do I know her, Adam? Krista says Red Lobster. Dig that one. You know, because uh. when you're all in that state of mind, right. you don't want to eat heavy, you know? Soup, salad, seafood, sure, diddle. See, here's where you go wrong though with the Red Lobster. It's those biscuits. Biscuits. Those biscuits are filling. It's like a meal. But that's what I'm saying. You don't want to... You don't want to hunker down to eight pounds of fried chickens and then diddle yourself. It's right. too heavy. Right. The, you know, the activities don't line up. Exactly. I like soup and a salad before I diddle myself. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get a cup of coffee and leave this conversation. Okay, guys. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. Go right now to i95rock.com. I got a ton of sick, fun articles for you. Uh, I have made a case that we need to do an intervention on the rock. The dude is working out way too much. You won, it's over, you have muscles in places they should not be. My Mayor Mark article is hitting uh, the I-95 Facebook page in 15 minutes. It's already on the website. Mayor Mark came on, and uh, he was our kind of correspondent yesterday to break down the presidential debate, complete with audio. And uh, Mark was very fair about it. I mean, he said, he said things in defense of Trump, which is in his same party, uh, and he said things that were... Uh, would not be considered in defense of Trump, up to and including that, uh, what did he say? Uh, let me look at it. We're looking at it. He said, oh, that Trump is undermining the election process. He also said that folks here in Western Connecticut, whether you're voting in person or a mail-in ballot, you can trust in our system that we have great town clerks and registrars uh, all over this thing. Uh, so go check that out. What else we got going on? The Brazilian doctor who's out of work because uh, she competed in the Miss Bum Bum contest. I wrote that one, too. Go check it out. Your code words are coming up. When you get the code word on the show, you'll hear it very deliberately. You're going to go to the I-95 Rock app. You're going to plug that bitch in, and then you're in the running for up to $10,000 on I-95. It's called the Ultimate Stimulus Check. Go follow us on Instagram. I just put a, a, a bunch of brand new stuff from the Ethan and Lou show on our Instagram page yesterday, at i95rock. Follow me on Instagram, at LouMilano79. Subscribe to my YouTube page by typing in my name. I work 15 hours a day, sometimes 16, 17. Go do what I tell you to do, please, okay? I'm not effing around here anymore. Guys, this has been a blast. Thank you very much. 
chew on it, share it with a friend.